Vertigo Recovery Doctor, I'm Dr. Kevin Smith. I'm a vestibular physical therapist, and today I'm gonna to talk about three reasons you may be struggling to get rid of your chronic vertigo. Now, I don't wanna oversimplify things. I know chronic conditions can be challenging to, to manage or to get through, um, but these are three things that I see come up often with my patients when they're trying to get through um, their chronic diagnosis, specifically vertigo. So. Maybe you've addressed these things, um, maybe you haven't. And my goal is to kind of help you think about whether or not you're actually uh, kind of having the humility to look and see if these are things that are contributing to your problem um, and to kind of look at yourself honestly and see, okay, well, you know, maybe this is something that I struggle with and I'm just not addressing it. Um, cause I, I know that's kind of happened with me with, uh, working through my chronic, uh, gut dysfunction. So, um, first thing that I often see is kind of anxiety or fear that becomes a barrier in recovering from vertigo. Um, now this can either stem from vertigo or a fear of vertigo itself and somebody's then beginning to be anxious all the time because they're worried about experiencing the next vertigo episode. And um, when somebody experiences vertigo, um, it can often kind of trigger this emotional response within the brain because it's really closely related to, or there's close connections between the vestibular system, um, what, uh, where it's processed in the brain with the limbic and that processes your emotions. And so when you have a um, vertigo or vis you know, vestibular dysfunction, this can oftentimes trigger emotions, um, fear specifically, um, and kind of heighten that experience, right? So you can experience vertigo and somebody who's completely calm during the vertigo event um, is gonna have a completely different experience than somebody who uh, experiences vertigo and has a lot of anxiety or fear associated with that event, right? Uh, anxiety and the fear is gonna make everything worse. Um, you know, a lot of times this can result in just heart palpitations, nausea, sweatiness. Um, you know, you can have nausea from vertigo without anxiety too. But um, some of these kind of um, upregulated symptoms or um, you know sympathetic nervous responses um, are going to kind of add to this experience that you're having when you're dizzy, um, making it something that becomes more um, more of like an anxiety-producing fear. And so you can have this fear of um, vertigo itself, and or this anxiety that kind of contributes to um, you, you know, worrying about having another vertigo episode. Um, the other thing that could happen is that maybe you just have generalized anxiety and this generalized anxiety over every, every little thing throughout the day is kind of contributing to this upregulated state of your nervous system. So when I talk about this upregulated state of your nervous system, I'm talking about this, um, kind of, um, dominance of your sympathetic nervous system uh, with that fight or flight system and your parasympathetic system that rest and digest is not able to put the brakes on it because it's just over dominant and um, you know this is something that um, I've noticed that I I was in this sympathetic nervous system state and I thought that was just kind of how what the norm is and uh, it wasn't until I was working with a medical professional to kind of you know, down regulate my nervous system that I experienced, oh, wow, this is what, this is what, you know, being calm and grounded and, and stable actually feels like. And so a lot of times people can be stuck in that, in that mode and not even realize it, um, or just think that's kind of what normal is. And so, um, you know, that's the, if you're struggling with anxiety or with fear, um, you know, maybe you're seeing a vestibular physical therapist to work through your vertigo. It's also, I would highly recommend working with somebody to get through that anxiety as well. Um, and, you know, don't discount um, talking to your medical professional about uh, gut dysfunction as well, because that can all, a lot of times be associated with depression, anxiety, some of those um, mental health things too. Um, 
All right, so the second thing that I see is that people haven't found the root cause of their vertigo either. Now, um, this can be a barrier because, you know, maybe some people can treat their symptoms, some people can treat their vertigo without having a diagnosis and just do the exercises based on the symptoms that they're experiencing. Um, but if you've done this and you haven't found relief, then maybe you need to go a little bit further in investigating what might be the root cause of your vertigo. Um, if you need help with this, you can check out my, um, my PDF I'll, or my ebook. I'll put a link in the notes for five most common causes of vertigo and what to do about them um, to help you kind of figure out what, where you might fall in. And, you know, there's more causes than what I have in there, but that's the ones that I find are, are most commonly affecting somebody. And sometimes it's a combination, you know, you may have more than one diagnosis that's contributing to your vertigo. And that might be why it's so challenging to kind of pull things apart or to figure out what's, what's causing it. Um, if you need some help, feel free to reach out. But I encourage you to, if, if you've already tried Therapy, if you've already tried to exercise and you still don't know what's causing your vertigo, maybe helpful to work with somebody in figuring out, um, you know, what might be the root cause of the problem. Um, and because there's something causing the vertigo, we want to make sure that we figure out what's causing it so that you can better address it. Um, you know, maybe there's something that you haven't thought of before that might be helpful. So dig a little bit deeper into looking into what might be causing your vertigo. And the third thing that I see as a common barrier to people overcoming their chronic vertigo is um, kind of motivation, I'd say. Um, are you willing to put in the hard work? Because it can be really challenging to get through a chronic condition. And it requires a lot of hard work. Um, it requires a lot of trial and error as well. And um, I don't want to diminish anybody's, um, you know, what you've done already to try and get rid of your chronic vertigo, but just take a hard look at what you have done and uh, see if you're being consistent with it, you know? If you find it hard to stick with uh, a treatment program, if you find it hard to stick with exercises, um, you know, you're not alone. It's hard for me too. Um, but let's say... Um, like I, if, if I don't have goals written out in a plan and a direction, then I kind of just end up being busy without any accomplishing anything. You know, my, my days look stressed as I have a lot to do as long as, as, um, most other people, you know, but, um, if I don't have a plan, if I don't have goals written out for the day, and kind of a structure, then I'm just running around being busy and I'm just stressed, but I don't actually accomplish anything. I don't finish anything. So um, my encouragement to you would be to make goals for yourself, make out a plan and stick to it. You know, It's gonna take a while of you sticking to this program, sticking to this plan um, to see results. And as you're working through that plan, then you can kind of fine tune and make adjustments. You don't have to stick with it. But, you know, for example, like if you're having trouble getting through um, an exercise program or staying consistent with the exercise program, um, maybe you just commit to um, specific days of the week, you know, three days a week, start there. And maybe you just commit to two minutes of just going out and going for a walk. Um, get, dry, get your shoes on go out just two minutes, go for the walk, chances are you'll probably end up walking a little bit further than two minutes or longer than two minutes. But start small, make those, make those goals small, start somewhere. So something's better than nothing, but try to make it consistent. Um, and you're going to find better results um, with that kind of consistency. And it's also kind of a mindset thing. You have to have a mindset of that you are going to get better or that there is hope for you. And I'm, I'm hoping that you um, get that from this channel is that there's hope for your vertigo. There's hope for you getting through this um, and that there's, there's hope for you to recover and get better. So, you know, I, I want you to be motivated. I want you to, uh, you know, don't lose hope. Um, 
because there, there's something you can do for it. Maybe you just haven't found the right recipe yet. Maybe you haven't found the right consistency yet. Um, but for me, I know exercise can be challenging even as a physical therapist. I try my best to stay consistent, but with kids and family um, and you know work and everything going on, it's hard to do that. Um, but even when I was kind of first starting out, um, I had a lot of like exercise intolerance and it took working with my medical professional to, uh, kind of decrease some of the inflammation that I had in my body, uh, from my gut dysfunction to get to a point where I could tolerate exercise a little bit better. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is completely different, you know? So there may be different avenues that you need to work with your medical professional to kind of get to where you want to be as well, but, um, start somewhere, you know, and stay consistent. And so um, those are some of the things that I see with people who have chronic conditions. Um, it's not an exhaustive list. I know there's a bunch more things that probably be barriers, uh, but I just, those are some that can, um, that I see often and uh, can be more of that kind of global, uh, applicable to a lot of different people. Um, cause I know that the, you can kind of get into the weeds with, uh, you know, more specifics to depending on certain diagnoses. Um, but yeah, if you're having difficulty with your, um, if, with your, uh, dizziness or your vertigo, please feel free to reach out. Um, you know, leave your experience down in the comments. Um, and I hope that you leave this video feeling encouraged that, uh, there's something you can do for your vertigo. Um, and I hope that you are able to find that plan and that direction and stay consistent. Um, but yeah, God bless.